Bismillah and welcome to another episode of The Bridge. Today I have a good friend of mine, name is Guled, also known as Inspire for Change. We go way back with this brother. I was in prison with him many years ago. A very warm-hearted guy, open guy. And if you look into his Instagram, you see he's a very open and inclusive type of person who goes around speaking to anyone and trying to inspire anyone. So today we want to get into his lifestyle, how he was from a young age, his transition from prison to the life that he's living now, and any gems that we can get, inshallah, you benefit from. Obviously, we have our co-host, Imam, as well. Straight away, we're going to get into it with Guled and find out how his life was from a young age. So yeah, bro, Barakallah yes. for coming, man. You came two hours drive as well. No, don't say, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, if for real. Was free, if it was no, free, I would've it. done it anyway. No, bro, but no, you know, you, you're, you're doing it for free, bro. There's no payment here. So it's all from the heart. That's what people don't realize as well sometimes. You know, people come here, traveling very far, just to chat. There's no payment for you. There's no nothing, actually. It's just, come see us, bro. And you came from wherever you came from. Nah, so man, again, it's a pleasure to nah, be nah. here. Alhamdulillah, thanks for having me here. Come on. You know what I mean? You're a very good friend of mine, innit? So you get me there. It's, it's mutual love anyway, both ways. And I'm I'm happy to be with Imam Shakil today. And inshallah, I can put some benefit into this podcast. 100%. And hopefully you can do something amazing. Inshallah. 100%. So straight into it, like just tell us straight away from a young age, where did you come from? Was you born here? Was you you immigrated here, asylum seeker, wherever you want to go from? You okay. let us know. All right, cool. Um, I came to the UK from the age of um, 10 months old. Okay. And obviously we fled the war from Somaliland and Somalia. So um, I came here as 10 months old. So my name's Guled, so that means successful. Mm-hmm. We got victory. That's when Somalia and Somaliland got separated. Mm-hmm. Understand? So alhamdulillah, my birth name was Abdul Nasir. Okay. You know, and a lot of people don't know that. But then okay. after we won, and when we got the Guled mm. victory, then my dad, my father called me Guled. Guled. Okay. You know what I mean? So I was grateful for that. And from there, we came to Manchester from the age, till the age of five, okay. I went to Manchester. And then um, I moved to London from and when I was six. And then from London, um, from the age of seven, I got expelled from school. Mm. For, um, you know, I was a bit, and I was a bit bad I was, I had, they said I had ADHD, but mm. I just had a lot of energy. I just needed my energy to put in the right places, you know. And obviously, I got expelled, and from there, they banned me from every school. Okay. In the area. At, so, the, at the age of seven. Yeah, man. That's a big problem we speak about today, where that the, 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 the school already, you know, transitions you to leave that lifestyle. They don't. If someone has a problem, there's no system to kind of keep them. In a narrow, straight line, it's like as soon as you're a bad, rotten fruit, we'll just throw you to the rest, basically. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it's the fact, especially when English is not our parents' first language, mm-hmm. they take advantage out of that. Mm-hmm. And it's not like um, we had, we was like the first generation to grow up here. So it's like right now we've got both my, myself and yourself. So if you had your little brother right now and they had problems in school, we can attend parents' you know how meetings. how to articulate yeah, yourself. We can go to parents' meetings. Mm. We can speak to the head teacher and stuff like that. But with parents, they're just getting told that like, no, no, in it, and mm. that's it. And mm. my mom was really her English was not her first language, so it was really hard for her. Mm. And plus, I had other brothers too. So she's like, you know what? Um, it was, she was all over the place, innit? So no. I can't lie in it. You know what I mean? But I haven't did it later, though. Cool. So what primary school did you go to? I went to first primary school. I went to two primary school, actually. Stuff like, yeah. I went to Dormers. Now, stuff like, yeah, I went to Dormers first. That's when and I got I got expelled um, for a beat up on a kid because he was trying to bully my brother. But he was in my year. Mm-hmm. You know? So I, I had a little fight with him. They expelled me from there. But then they took me to the other primary school where... Um, um, North Primary School. They're both in Southall. One's next to Gulf Links Estate, the other one's next to Southall Broadway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's called North Primary. And from there, I was there for like two, three months. And that's when the incident happened where the teacher grabbed my arm. And when she grabbed my arm, um, I swung it about. I told her, let go, let go. She didn't want to let go. I put my leg out. As soon as I put my leg out, she dropped, landed on her elbow, mm-hmm. and it broke. Mm-hmm. And there was, you know what? They started. Exploded again. Yeah, and then from there, I was done. So, from, yes, that was seven years old still at that stage. Yeah, I was like eight, seven, eight. Mm. It was in that period of time. And then from there, I was just at home. My mom was not really too happy with me. I was all over the place. I was at home. Then I got to the age of 10. Um, I received my first criminal record. Mm. Do you know? And so you're saying from the age of eight to 10, no school still? Still no school. Wow. I'm just about, bro. Mm. Do you know? I'm bored at home. Mm. All my brothers are at school. 
I'm so the they were still at school. You was the yeah, only one that was, I was kicked the only out. Yeah, I was just there, bro. Okay. I just at home, bro. So there was no like referral centers. No, nah, like... them ages you don't get referrals like that. To be mm. honest with you, and to be honest with you, you didn't want to go too deep in because then eventually the social services start mm. getting involved. Mm. You know, because they could see this little pattern where where's this young man at. So they kept an extra eye out on my mum, mm. you know? And as soon as they kept an eye out on my mum, my mum started getting panicky, panicky. Then I ended up just getting the f- finger pointed at me, like, you're being a nuisance, you know what I mean? How come your other brothers don't bring trouble to the house? Mm-hmm. And I was only young, you know? And out of your brothers, where, where, do, where are you, middle, oldest, I'm the youngest? middle child. You're the middle, middle child. child. So I've got two older brothers, alhamdulillah, and I've got three younger brothers and... And alhamdulillah, and a younger sister. Mm. Alhamdulillah. Well, yeah. just a f- uh, firstly, Jazakallah khair, and thank you very much for coming. Alhamdulillah, you know, we all hear about the good work you're doing right through Inspire right. for Change. Okay. And Abdul Latif, of course, knows you well, so he kind of keeps us updated. So may Allah uh, increase you in khair and goodness mm-hmm. and barakah and uh, the work you're doing. Mm-hmm. Just a few questions concerning your childhood. So, what one was, uh, was there any support from, let's say, the Somali community? For you and and, and and your family and your parent and your mom, uh, uh, also from the Muslim community, was it, you were you know seven eight years old. Any support did you get from anybody at that time? To be honest with you, um, with some our uh, Sheikh and then Imam and then with our community back then. Now I think it's becoming a bit different, but back then, like people love to keep their business to themselves. Like it's a shame, you know. Like if even if you're going through the worst stages of your life. And people have been told, like, it's ab, don't tell no one your business, keep it to yourself. So my mum didn't feel like she had to reach out and ask for help. And my mum's a very strong woman, mashallah, you know. So she's thinking, like, you know, I've got this covered, you know. So there was no one from the community and stuff like that. And if there was someone from the community, my mum would, what she would try to do, she would try to you know, just kind of sweep it under the carpet. Not make it as a thing, like it's serious. No, nah, no, nah, he's just got a spell for only a couple of weeks, but at least I know it's a couple of months, mm. you know. But she don't. She can't see the bigger impact, you know. And obviously, she's just going by what she knows as a person. Alhamdulillah, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And she's done her best. So yeah, there was no community um, support back then. Mm. And only when I got to the ages of 18, 19, when I st- when I came out of prison and stuff like that, that's when I started seeing a few people from Connections. I don't know. There was a little while back. Okay. There's a thing called Connections, yeah. and a few people, um, a couple of sisters, used to help me then. But still, there was no structure. No structure. Uh, in terms of about the Muslim community, you know, Muslims kind of like outreaching you, your mum helping you. Might not be from the Somali community, but outside the Somali community. But, uh, you know, this is a Muslim family. Let me try and help this youngster or help the family. No? Well, back then? Back then, yeah. Nah. Yeah. I didn't see no one. Hmm. I only, to be honest with you, but I'll be honest with you, like my like my father passed away, I learned that this story at a young age, but hmm. he left... He left us, my mum and him, and my mum, and he separated when I was eight, seven. This is when I started becoming rebellious, mm. you know? And I, I don't know, I didn't have a father figure at home in it, so I was just, and I didn't want it. My mum, I was, at them times, I was scared of my mum, you know? I respected her, but I was scared of her in a way, but outside, I was not scared of nobody. So all of that anger, I was taking out of anyone, mm. you know? And this is where I used to, maybe because, obviously, it's, there's a certain upbringing where, where we come from, we got we got brought up in a certain way. Where you now, where my parents and, and my mom got brought up, she got brought up in a certain way. Where maybe smacking him will do the job, like maybe shouting him do the job, but they don't know how much that impacts the person and it affects the person whilst they go outside and they could, you know. So yeah, mom. Yeah. Just older siblings. You mentioned you're the middle one. Yeah. So when you were seven, eight, how were how old were the older ones? Well, there's not even that much older. Saeed. And was a year older than me, and Ahmed oh. was three, four years older than me. Mm. So, a bit of guidance from them are saying, you know what, Guled, okay, don't do these things. Did you get any help, support, guidance from them saying, ah, you think you're doing the wrong thing, or this is what you need to be doing? No, <laughs> but I was just, after, after, I was like, my brother's gonna speak to me. They're mm. gonna talk to me. Like, I was like, Ahmed, who was a bit older than me, and he was just on his own thing. He had his own, like, imagine we used to live in a three bedroom house here. Yeah? There'll be like four of us sleeping in one room, but he will have his own bedroom. <laughs> Do you know? Like he he, he felt yeah, like he's because the man that has. Yeah, he was the man. Yeah, he had yeah. his own yard, and when it comes to eat, he's getting the swag. 
We get in the de- we get the high tech, we get in the dead thing. He's getting the swag. I'm looking, how come he's getting 200 pounds spent on him? And I'm only getting 20 pounds spent on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she thought like she had to give it to him because she was the oldest and yeah, yeah man, she tried it best. Mm, yeah. Do you think yeah. the reason that there was no level of because we obviously me and you speak behind the scenes and that would you say the father figure not being there, dad not being there long term? Obviously he went at a young age, but the fact that he wasn't there to kind of show who was who. To give you lot like this is the oldest, the respect between you lot. Does that play a big part, or would you just say yeah, if, if, if he was there? Hundred percent ability. Yeah, you're right. Exactly as you were saying. Like there has to be like some sort of structure and some sort of discipline or some sort of respect mm. in between the siblings, you know. And as much as the mum could do it, she can't really do Both. what a man can do, you know. Mm. So my dad, what he, I remember, my dad used to tell me information when I was six years old. And I still remember it now. Mm. He would sit down with me and tell me this, that, 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 the third. And it still sticks to me. So with my mum, her main concern was, okay, put food on the table. Okay, um, I may need to go back home and buy some land. And she's thinking about plan B. We're living in plan A. Mm -hmm. We're living in the present. Mm. And what we tend to do is, as and and, and I don't know, but but what they tend to do, they think about the future, longevity Mm. too much. Mm. Not thinking like let's live for the present, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And she was more focused on the future. So she'll and, struggle now for the future kind of thing. Yeah, and now she handled that she's doing. She's done well for the future, but yeah. in that time, that energy could have been mm. impacted into the um, ch- children. Mm. But she had a whole different plan, you know. And mm. her intentions were just I don't. I didn't want you guys to be knocking on no one's doors, or I wanted to have some sort of some sort of. Um, in like house or something so when you go back home you don't need to beg no one for nothing you know yeah something to fall back on yeah kind of fall thing. back yeah fall back on in it so she yeah man. just just on that part of good head so one issue was you know your father rahimahullah yeah. did he pass and here he, or pass here in in in, yeah. in london catford catford I mean, I mean, remember i told you no. we, drove, we drove past it i said my dad lived on the right hand side here yeah, you got an 84 gig, bro. You know, my brain is a fish brain. Brother, it was like three months ago. A lie. And I was Catfish. like, here, here, I was here. And it was next to that big, you know, that big, uh, Catfish, that big college. Yeah, the red yeah, one. You did Remember, I'll mention yeah, it to you. Yeah, yeah, which college? Okay, which college? Okay, okay. Yeah, there's like some red college kind of private, is it a private school? That's a Catfish. St. Dustin's Church. College. St. Dustin's. Yeah. Yeah. Or just I, up the I, road. I, across the road from it, there used to be, yeah, a lot. Like some houses. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. He used to live there. I remember. I used to come visit him. Mm. Yeah, and, and he the, passed away when you were eight. Uh, no, fifteen. Fifteen. All right. I was and I was and I was in Hagees. I was in Somalia. Okay, okay. I didn't get to go even go to the funeral. Oh, I mean, I mean, I mean. The, the other issue was in terms of speaking about uh, you know. So remember one thing. I think sometimes we become we're harsh on parents. We become over judgmental. And remember that generation coming. And the younger generation, you being brought up, there's a difference. Mm. So their plan B is plan A, meaning I'm not at home. I don't feel welcomed. I don't feel happy. So they're just planning to go back and build a life there. So that's why they're always focusing on what we might say plan B, but to them is their plan plan A. Mm. So the point I'm just trying to say, just to kind of like be sometimes, make excuses. Yeah, sympathetic. Yeah, sympathetic. But at the same time, Imam, yeah, it's the thing where they was raised in a different mindset than how we was raised. Mm. So what they was doing is not wrong by what they're doing because they mm. what they know is what they know, you know. And without the knowledge that you've got, you have only can do what you can do. But the more knowledge you gain, is the more you can benefit your children or you benefit your community and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's why, you know what I mean? So it's like you said, it's, it's, it's different and... Um, Norms, norms, different things. norms and different generations, and I think definitely we tend today, definitely anyway, bash our elders, and I don't think that's what he's trying to do, but no, no. that's where we don't sympathize a lot with what they do. Yeah, and sometimes you can say, you know what, I believe they done wrong, wrong here, but you know what, in the grand scheme of things, that was their best. That's yes. the main yeah, thing. Yeah, I'm, 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 you know I'm trying to say, yeah, but me knowing, sorry to interrupt you, of course. I say me knowing this year, mm. maybe four, four, five years ago, I used to be like, why, like, mm. why was I, why did I go through this and why did I go through that mm. and like, what, what, like, how come, how come they didn't know what I was thinking? But then I realized there's things that I didn't know five years ago that I know now, mm. you know. So then I said, Alhamdulillah, like I said, they, they, you, you whoever. It was around me. They raised us to the best of their ability, ability. and their intentions are always clean. Mm. So Allah will never have nothing against them because they're just giving us the knowledge by 
what they know. Mm-hmm. So you can't get held against something that you don't know. Exactly. Yeah, I think exactly. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Cool. So moving on, we said then um, at around up to 11, you didn't go to school, you said. Yeah. So what happened for secondary school? Uh, they, they banged me from every second. I've never been secondary school in my whole life. I've never what? wore a school uniform. SubhanAllah. Never in my life. I was that kid outside the school, mm. waiting three o'clock. I'm waiting for the three thirty kids to come out. I'm there in my Adidas tracksuit. No. With my push bike, BMX. She's just that ample time. Yeah, but and I thought it was just, I don't know, I was just so, and it didn't really affect me back then, to be honest with you. But eventually, when you when there's things going on in your life as a young age, eventually, you may think it don't affect you today, mm. but down the line, it will affect you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's, it's a building scale, and once it builds, 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 now that's where it can impact you, and that's where trauma and a lot of things can come into place, mm. you know? But I'm doing it. What, what about like uh, okay, you didn't go to like a uh, school, but maybe it's like an education center. Yeah, maybe I wanted to. Yeah, is uh, uh, it called t- uh, tutorial? Okay. I think they call it Peru in okay. South London, mm-hmm. Peru. So you go, you go there like two hours a week. A week only. Yeah, two hours a week or two yeah. hours a day. Yeah, two hours a week on a Wednesday mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. through the week, and then you go there two hours, and that 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 they give you two. You remember them little bus tickets, forty p bus tickets, and you rip it off like that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, go home. Mm. And come back. They give you the, the the goal and the comeback. That's it. Come back next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. They give you two tickets. That's it. That's mm. Yeah. So the roads, in, in essence, became your your university. Yeah, that's where I felt like I felt the most. I was more comfortable on the roads than I was on the in, on the streets. Mm. Now I was more comfortable on the streets than I was at home. Mm-hmm. A million percent. Mm-hmm. A million percent. Because I remember when I was twelve years old, I used to just be out of my house for like two weeks. Two weeks. 12 years old. 12 years old. Nobody asking questions. Mum asked a question, but that's what I'm trying to say. This is where a lot of parents, like, I was scared to go home. I'm talking about to stay out here. Mm. It's long going back there. Mm. I know what's waiting for me. <laughs> I swear, I'm, I'm not on it. I'm not on it. I'd rather stay out here, go to Auntie Marie's house, yeah. chill with her, mm. have Sunday d- l- l- dinner with them, mm. chill, kick back with all. There was not only me, though, mm. there was like 10, 15 of us. Yeah, yeah. You know, we used to just sleep in the city room and like, yeah, she was a nice lady, but we used to do our thing and we used to get money anyway. So, like, you know what I mean? So, 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 so was it, sorry, was it for the fear of your mum beating you or was it more you was enjoying being out? It was, I was enjoying my surroundings more than I was enjoying my household at that moment in the time. Mm. So I'd rather be out than be at home, you know? Because I'm sitting at home, bro. I'm not going to school, bro. There's nothing that I'm doing. So mm. I'm always just thinking, thinking, thinking. And when you're around the house and you're just being a pest, and everyone's at school and you're just there. Mm. And you just you think like all eyes on you. And if anything goes wrong, even if that bill comes through that door, you're thinking, bruv, if, like if that's looking like a red, that he's just... coming on you, bro. Mm. You get me? So you just go about your business and do your thing. Was there no like no uncles to hold your hand? Was there no cousins, no family relative to say, look, come off the roads? But right, see with that now, yeah, because obviously my mum and my father separated, yeah? Mm. So now. Um, I learned how this story, man. My mom, she went through that time. That's what I'm trying to say. Through that time, my mom lost a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Through that age, when I was eight to eleven, she left her mom. I learned how this story. She lost her, her sister, mm-hmm. her only sister, mm-hmm. that got murdered by her husband. Mm-hmm. Do you know? Mm-hmm. And like she was, and she was even she got her. She done so much, mashallah. Well, like, I don't about it, yeah. She got her dad. Her dad was in Somalia. She had to get her dad, her two brothers from Somalia to attend a funeral, mm-hmm. make them get placed. She had to then she picked up her two daughter and sisters and um, two children yeah. to go bring them to us. Mm. Then raise them as well and look after them. Make so sure she applied for all of that and got yeah, them. Yeah, man, she done mm. her thing, man. That's why she was all over the place. Like, there's mm. only so much that she could have done, isn't it? Mm. You know what I mean? And when I'm bringing trouble and no one else is bringing trouble, she's thinking, like, I really got enough on my plate, bro. Like, and then it's, and the Gulad, like, why are you doing this, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, man, you only realize this now when you get oh, older. No. So when you said 12 years old, you're on roads. I mean, look, on your own. You did say 15 men in, you know, 15 uh, somebody's years. house. But, so is is that who you were hanging around at that yeah. age? Were they older or the same age as Same you? age of us. Uh, Somalis or non-Somalis? Um, or? There was only me and another Somali boy. Only one, but the rest of them was in the African Caribbean, um, white brothers. Um, mm. Yeah, that's a mixture. Mi- yeah, mixed race brothers, yeah, yeah. And when you say on roads, would at that age, would you say it meant robbing, stealing, selling, selling, you know what, drugs? What was it? It was stealing. Stealing robbery, yeah, robberies, street robberies back then. Mm. Just doing bad street robberies, phones, staying out nights. I don't know how, bro. Like we'll just catch the like the, the night bus, 
from one end to the other, go to central London, do the mad thing, then catch the other bus back. Then whoom, 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 we're just living life like that. They will go there, they will go there, they will go there. But then guess what they used to do though? They used to go back home and get changed, go sit and then come back out and fresh. Mm -hmm. I think that's all long for me. I'm out here, I'm, I'm buying new clothes on the spot. Mm. I'm buying new food, I'm having my shower, I've got my towel, I'm a friend's mm. in the house. Mm. And I'm fresh, I'm all right. I'm not even looking, I'm okay in it. I'm looking calm, I've got mm. my little change in that. And when I do eventually go home, mm -hmm. it's been so long, like, it's just long now. She don't know Strangers. what to say. She don't know what to say. <laughs> you know, it's been so long. And then she's like, all right, cool, da da da, da. And from there. What, what about your, you said, Ahmed is your oldest brother? Yeah. So if you're 12, Ahmed was 16, 17? Yeah, he's yeah, he's, yeah, he's um, 16, 17, indeed. Anything from him, Ahmed, did he speak to you and say, look, you know what? You... He got he got influenced by elders in the area, you know, from an early age, you know? And he was the only, he was the first Somali in my area to shop, sell, sell okay. stuff in it, you know? Okay. And so he was around, already around, the bad environment, you know? So he already had his own things to deal with, you know? So he didn't even, he didn't even have time to even think about his own siblings, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I've got my other brother, Saeed, you know? And he ended up just doing his thing somewhere else as well, you know? And then, yeah, we was just out here. We, oh, don't get me wrong. I was not the only one out here. They was out here in a way like that, but they were more, like they had structure because they was going to school. So when they was going to school, Ahmed was, uh, stuff. Ahmed was not around. I think, I, when I was 12, I'm is three years older than me. Sorry, yeah, okay, okay. He's like three years older because he was like in year 10, year 11 times, isn't it? You know? And Saeed, he was just like a year older than me. So they used to go to school. You know? They mm -hmm. finished school. Mm -hmm. they didn't, did nothing happen. They got their GCSEs. Okay. They still had a little lifestyle. As much as they were doing what they were doing, they still had a little structure into their life. Mm -hmm. When you don't have no structure in your life, that's when everything's all over the place. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So you get me, you get these, that's why a lot of, yeah, let me just go, not going to sign us. Mm. Just a side point to that. So, you know, it's uh, more for you, Abdul Latif, in the sense that, uh, you know, he's he's got a construction business. I don't want that. And I think not everybody's into education. Even the Sahaba, the Sahaba or the Prophet were unique. Salah, salah. One's, you know, focusing on Quran, but one's focusing on Hadith. One's focusing on, you know, battles and wars, and one's focusing on agriculture. Another one is so focusing on business. Mm -hmm. You know, like Abu Bakr Siddiq is, is a businessman, uh, you know, and so on. So, okay, it might not be education, but there should be. And that's why my initial point, you know, whether it's the wider Somali community or the Muslim community, sometimes it's difficult for a single parent to look after all of the kids. Mm -hmm. But that's where the community comes in. Yeah. And, and I would say, look, we as Muslims, look, our community, sh community should be larger. We're not coming from an ethnic kind of like uh, angle. We come from a religious angle, uh, you know, Allah Ta'ala in the Quran would say, Inna hadi ummah tu ummatan wahida. This ummah is one ummah. So the Muslim community can, ah, you know what, Guled, see, you know, in school, I've got a construction business, I can make an apprenticeship, apprentice to become a carpenter, to become a plumber and so on. Mm. You know, and that's something that he's doing with his kind of like, uh, the thief's doing. Yeah, but sure. what do you think? Would, I, would that have helped you if that was there at that time? At that time, I could, to be honest with you, Imam, we, like, that time and now, we're in two different times now. Mm. Back then, people just about knew how to get used to the country. People mm. were settling in. Mm. They were still asylums. They were still new to their environment. Mm. So they, they just barely knew themselves how to get their feet grounded. Mm. So, you know, that's why Gulen passed through, let's say, the Somali community started coming in those years. Oh, yeah, you're I'm talking, talking about Muslim. About, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. I'm more thinking yeah. about, yeah, yeah, you I know, yeah, yeah. Okay, some have been there established for a while. They've got businesses. They've got kind of outlets. Okay, why? There should be no element of racism in our in our kind of like uh, no, um, with the Muslim nation um, with the Muslim. So okay, this is a young Somali boy. He needs help. I'm Arab. I'm Asian. I'm you know what from Nigeria or something. Bismillah. Let me help him. I've got a business. I think he's good with his hands. Let me make him into a carpenter. So on, in hindsight, do you think that would have kind of like helped? Many percent. But what we do is for the Somali, what we do is us as Somali community, we try to distance ourselves in a way. I don't know if it's like, like that in around there, but what we try to do, we, we're Muslim, but we're, we're Somali Muslim, where we try to seclude ourselves and try to, you know what I mean, divide ourselves from our own brothers and sisters, you know, and this mm. is where we're lacking. Mm. We think we're protecting ourselves, but this is where we become weak. Yeah. You know, and you know what I mean? Like, um, like yeah, so. Yeah. I, I would say, um, it's it's like a it's like a pro and a con with the Somalian community. The pro is you're so kind of self sufficient and honourable in your own limelight that you're willing to do for yourself. But in that, 
when it comes as a community, that type of mindset doesn't really work as a community because community means there is an interdependency on each other. And interdependency means each person can be independent ultimately. Absolutely. But when you do an interdependence, it means I'm willing to rely on you even though I don't necessarily need mm -hmm. you. There isn't that mindset with the Somalian community. I don't know if that's the same with other communities, but that's definitely a big thing. And even back home, I remember I was telling you one time about this British man who, uh, when he wrote about the... the uh, Somali, he visited Somalia. He visited he Somalia. Him, yeah. What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> so the, basically, this guy went around. He's like a British colonial... Yeah, yeah. The colonial times, anyway. Yeah. And he said, he's, I've been around all the African uh, nations, but the Somalian nation are the most arrogant, prideful... And he, I think he used the word like uh, snakey or but he used the word no, like, face, uh, courage, courage. He said the courage. It's courage. courage no, but he's said. like, a, like, if you look further down, it's yeah. like they was backstab you or something like this. Mm -hmm. So he was naming like lots of different um, uh, characteristics uh, of Somalians. Yeah. Some of them obviously beneficial, but some of them at the same time, even though they're beneficial, they're self-defeating. Do you get what I mean? So the, the, the British coming there, it worked because they care about themselves. They're willing to fight for themselves. But then when it comes together as a community, they kill each other and because they don't want to work with each other. Do you get what I'm trying to say to you? And that's what we kind of brought when we came here. It was like, this is my community. I'm not really going to mix with the Asians or whatever. You're my Muslim brothers. But there's not this kind of let's share and care. Yeah. I think slowly we're starting to get that because that's the younger generation. Mm. You know, we're, we're raised here, whether you're white, mixed, black, it's all the same nowadays, alhamdulillah. Mm. But at that time, like you were saying, because you're so grassroots, you're just thinking about your, 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 your inner circle still. Do you know what I'm trying to yeah. say to you, bro? Indeed. And that was kind of the downfall with the Somali community, especially at that time, I personally saw anyway. Mm -hmm. But moving forward now, I would say we're definitely getting there, man. Yeah, but look, the Islamic kind of like paradigm, Islamic yeah. guidance, Sahaba. Mm -hmm. So you have Abu Bakr, no. he's an Arab. You have Salman, he's Persian. You mm -hmm. have Suhaib, he's, uh, you know, Rumi, European. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Bilal, he's Habashi. Mm -hmm. You know, Ethiopian, African, and so on. The Messenger of Allah, what did Allah so say? Al -mu'minuna oh. Yeah, the believers are our brothers and sisters. So why can't, why didn't Gulen get that support then? Okay, Somali community is incoming now, fine. Mm -hmm. You can understand. Language is an issue. Okay, yeah. English language. Okay, so the first language. So you got to get, a, so it's not blaming the Somali community. It's the host. I'm talking about the others now. The Other host. Muslim community who've been here for 50, 60, 70, mm, 80 years. Mm. Why didn't they outreach? I don't think it's a negative on the Somali community side. Mm. I think it's a negative on the other ethnic community, Muslim community. Because oh, they can see established. that they need help. Yeah. So why didn't they reach out to them? But if, some, if, if someone don't know that you need help, how would they be aware? There's too much pride. Mm. If you don't come asking for help, then no, there's no one to help you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes it's the men that should be out there to ask. Because if a woman goes out there and tries to ask another man for help, it looks a bit funny, you know? Mm. You know what I mean? But if it was a man, if my dad was at home and stuff like that, you then, he went out there, then he could tell, yo, who can help me? And then it could be right. They couldn't be understanding, but there's too much. Do you know right. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Mm. So moving forward then, and obviously you said you was in the streets at that time, you was doing theft. Yeah, little um, street robberies, you know, robberies, little, yeah, petty, like petty stuff, street so, robberies. So what was your first encounter with the police then, as in like the first time getting arrested kind of thing? That was 10 when I was 10. 10, you said? Yeah. Oh, well, for what? That was shoplifting. <laughs> yeah, that's when I came out of that two hour, um, I had that two hour um, school session, tutorial center. And then um, from there, I met another guy called Mohammed, mm -hmm. Iraqi brother. He was... 14 at end. Oh, it's not 14, 13 stuff a lot. Mm. 13 at the time. You incriminate no one, yeah? Nah. I'm joking. Yeah, no, no, no. No, 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 you're done. Yeah. That, was, that was years ago. So it's 2000, you know. Oh, this is historic now, man. Dinosaur ages. Bro. 2000. Mm -hmm. It's happened to his 20 years ago. Yeah, look at that. Watch this now, yeah? And then I was like, come, come with me. I said, what's up? I said, oh, we can go and get some games and stuff like that. Then I said, yeah. And I'm just thinking about, yeah, my, me and my brothers, we need more games, innit? I need to go and take one for the team. I went there, jumped on the chain, went all the way to Paddington with him, went in there, had this cap on. I had a cap, a cap on, one of those Spenty Nike ones with a little small tape on there. Went in there, HNV them days. I had games in there, there's no alarm tags or nothing. It was just, take game me, pick as you like. Mm -hmm. I just picked up five games, took the CDs out, took my hat off, boom, put it there, slapped it back on, big circle on my hat, walked out like some donut, <laughs> banged. 
and they grabbed me, called the police and put me to the police station for mm. six, seven hours. At that age, you think you're the smartest person on earth, innit? Yeah, no, you can't get caught. You can't get caught. My used to try to tuck in my trousers at the bottom, make it slide down yeah. and walk down. I'm thinking, there's no bulge. They're not going to see no bulge here. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'll just put it down, tuck it in like it's, like it's sooner or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's sooner or something. Tuck it in there from there. Boom, let it slide down. And there ain't no one bagging you today, yeah, bro. Yeah, and they still see you. Yeah, and you still... Nah, you can go about your business, Yeah, of man. course. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah so, 10 years old, you got arrested for shoplifting. Yeah. And then from then, was it a, like a... It was just... a street robbery day. And from, we went from street robberies. Then I started smoking weed at the age mm. of 12. I remember the first... It was White Widow, the first spliff that I smoked. Mm. I remember... Had it was a name. White Widow. It would lick your head back. It's how I got it. Do you know how I got it? <laughs> You guys, you know how I got it? This is how I know I'm so... Bro, I see an Asian brother, yeah? I don't know if it was a Indian. I think it was an Indian because I was living in the South and there's a lot of Indians around there, yeah? So I've seen this guy now. He had weed on him. Guess what? Police are coming. I kind of got... I was a joker. I gave a decent like, Police are coming now. He put the weed in his pocket there. Guess what I'm saying to my man? Well, listen, if you don't give me half of that, yeah, I'm going to tell them that you've got weed on you. Shay down, bro. He said, oh, please, oh, please, please, please don't do that. Do that. I'm only like 12, 11. Yeah. At this time now, he's like, oh, um, like, cool, cool. And then the police left. I said, all right, cool. So he left. I said, now, yeah, give me my thing. I said, roll it for me as well. So I'm mm. with my bridging, Mahmoud and Abdullah, innit? Abdullah, yeah. I ain't seen Abdullah ever since then, bro. I don't know where that brother is, bro. Do you know what I mean? But Mahmoud is there anyway. This time now, we're there, three of us. I said, yo, roll it, roll it for us. He built it for us. Went down the alley, smoked it. Why? Gone. I remember I had 20p. I went into a fish and chip shop. I only had 20p. I got the burger bun. Put vinegar on it. I was so hungry because you get money. Burger bun? The, the, just the bun by itself. I was hungry. Can I tell you I say? Yeah. I was so hungry, bro. I had 20p. I put it, got the vinegar and started boxing the thing. Messed up. <laughs> but, messed yeah, up it was. Mess, yeah, it was messed up. Yeah, obviously, did you, did you, did I was, you? I don't, obviously, I don't... No, no, no. Obviously, yeah. it was back then, innit? It was just crazy. Because mm. everything, sometimes in life, yeah, see what is bad for you. In the beginning, it seems like it's good for you. Mm. But eventually, down the line, it ends Catches up being up. your burden. Mm. And it will be something that's going to destroy you as a person. Mm. But at that so, time, it was like enjoyment. Yeah. It's even like gambling. But gambling. Did you, did you know it's haram at that time? Did you? Did nah. You know? Nah. No? No, to be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. The first person that I ever prayed Fajr with was a brother that referred to Islam in prison. Do you know? I was 22 years old. SubhanAllah. So all that time you wasn't praying? I've never, I never prayed for a child. No, so I, I, I used to wait, the, the I, weed, I used to wait weed. outside the mosque. All my friends right now, I used to think, you lot, when I was waiting outside the mosque, yeah, when you guys were going to pray Friday, Juma, why didn't you guys tell me to come in for? Mm. I said, bro, you was hard work, bro. Man, I tried to tell you to come inside the mosque. Mm. But you didn't want to listen to us. Mm. Mm. But the weed thing, did you know that was haram at that time or you didn't even know? No, <sighs> nobody told you anything? It's 12, innit? No. So I think the, we were saying the father wasn't really there. Mm. But don't you have like maybe fitrah? What's it? Natural disposition to say, look, you know what? I think mm. in my deen, this is gonna be a problem. I don't think it's gonna be okay. Did any anything come into your mind concerning deen, that? Deen's not even in the equation right now. Mm, okay, it's not in the equation. Allah it's... in the equation. Did you, you know, of course, Allah is there. Yeah, that that was there. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Yeah, he's there. Obviously, I'm Muslim, but yeah. obviously, I didn't practice what I was. In, you know, okay. I, did, I, did, I didn't know nothing. Did you ever go to what they call it, uh, Duxi? I Rasa. went Duxi. I remember a story. I'll tell you a story now. Mm -hmm. Ghost. You know, Ghost from Pench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Ghost is there, and Ghost was mentioned it to what. Well, that's all the way that side. Yeah, but he's moved to West these times. Okay. And all his cousins are there now, innit? Mm. You understand? So now I've got taken to a house. Don't get my mom's tried, you guys. Don't. Like, my mom, mashallah, she's tried, but I was a handful. Yeah, I was a handful. So I've gone Duxi now, yeah? Now there's like 15 of us. These kids all ghost and them, and they're older than me now. Today, they're maybe like 16 or something. I don't know. I can't remember. I think I was like, I was young, man. I'll be honest, I was young. I can't remember exactly, but I was really young. Then my Ali was there, yo, read this, read that. And I was doing Elif that, that, that. Then, 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 then he must have said, go again, read it again. No, no, who's this guy? And then again, he done, he said, don't talk to me like that. In front of everyone, everyone looked at me like, oh, and they still remember it from this day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he yeah, I'm. Then he tried to clap me. I said, I bugged out. I said, nah, I'm not having that. My mm. dad don't even touch me. Mm. How dare you touch me? Mm. Da, 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 da. Typical English up. boy. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, how dare like, you Tracy touch me? Tracy Meeker kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure. Give me. Then this time now, like, you have to say, why? I don't know you, innit? Don't touch me, innit? You don't mm. need to physically touch my skin. Mm. So I, then I reacted to, towards that. 
And then when I reacted towards that, he said, yo, I don't, I don't want to teach this kid ever again. Kicked you out. Yeah, I got kicked were, out. You, were you able to read the Quran? Did you learn to read kind of like uh, the Quran in Arabic? No. You wouldn't you spend that long in the... In the I, learned, I learned it from Imam... Um, I learned... Uh, the, 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 the Quran that I learned, alhamdulillah, was from Imam and Khabib from Felton. Mm. You know Imam Khabib, yeah, big yeah, beard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Imam, we were Mashallah. studying. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Khabib, yeah, yeah, he's a good yeah, yeah, yeah. Imam yeah. Khabib, Allah Mubarak, he helped me teach me. I used to go to his classes on Tuesdays mm. when I was in Felton. SubhanAllah. Mm. So, Duxi, by the way, Duxi means like a yeah. place where you learn uh, basic Arabic and Quran and things like that for the Muslim youngsters. Who sent you there? Or who even thought of taking oh, you? Mom tried to take yeah, you. There. Oh, yeah, oh, you took me there. Alhamdulillah, oh, you took us there because obviously the other kids are going as well. Mm. And that's not the first time she tried. She tried there another time when I remember when I was seven, there was a lady up the road that she used to do doxy as well. She used to take us to her house. But there was no consistency. You know, it was not consistent. Well, she, from whose side? Her side or your side? From my side, yeah. Your I don't side. know whose mm. side I could. Mm. I was only a certain age, so okay. but obviously I couldn't put the pressure on her. But yeah, there was no consistency, obviously. I failed. As I failed, I didn't go back, you know. She kept trying, but then, yeah. What do you say to that imam, though? Because I find, you see this especially, and again, because Guled is very well, I don't know, followed by the Somali community. You would, I say definitely from the Somali community angle, how Quran is taught is a very, like, um, problematic way of teaching. Uh, even historically for me, back home, how it was, I, I'll tell you a story. And... <laughs> True. I was, I was, I was, I was what? Four or five? Because I come here when I was eight. So, so I was, was probably point. four or five was when I was point. young. Mentally, you was 13. Because you know the, how yeah. Somali Seriously. is. You're already a big man back yeah. home. But yeah. I don't know. So I, everyone's used to getting beats at Somali. That's just a normal thing back there. But I was a bit more rebellious like him. So my mom sent me to uh, uh, Mal uh, to Mal learn. Yeah. Gone there. And I'm, the teacher's trying to teach me. But he tried to hit me. I'm thinking, okay, say no more. Four or five, you know. Finished the lesson after school. I waited. I had some stones. Hit the stones. I see the teacher coming out of the class. Start hitting him up. Started. He looked up. He saw my face. He said, it's time. That's why you two get along, man. You two get along. <laughs> You're pretty rebellious, I think. He said, you he told my mom, he said, yeah, for the I stoned teacher. him. And then he told my mom, he said, this guy, my mom beat me. We saw she did. Yeah. Yeah. And so the point I'm making here is yeah. how we're taught it's not from the Sunnah Imam, right or wrong? Look, uh, you know, solution, you know, for let's say, no, no, not, not just Somali community, wider Muslim community, in the world, it's Islam. Mm. You know, if we followed what Allah has given us and the Prophet let's say in this regard, teaching <laughs> Quran, is a Quran to be taught, so it's hated. Mm. You beat a children so much that, you know what, he hates the Quran. When he becomes older in 15, 16, then the parents can't force him to go, or her, she's like, that's it, I'm not going. And then he hates coming back to the Quran, the madrasa, the Tuxi, the masjid, yeah. and so on. You know, like he love. Where's the angle of love? Mm. And the Prophet in the Hadith of awesome. uh, Aisha of uh, you know, the Prophet never hit anyone with his hand, a woman or a servant, and so on. Why can't we follow that sunnah, especially when we're t uh, teachers and teaching? Mm. So I think that's an important angle as well that needs to be applied. Yeah. So it was good to rebel. Yeah, you, you, you guys set the for the teachers to reflect on start changing. You yeah, and Gulen yeah, need yeah. to start changing, yeah. man. It's yes, not us, bro. They need to change. But no, yeah. but no, it's on a serious note, it's true. Yeah, serious, There's ways it? to make the kids love the way of life. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And I think many communities do it. And I think even Asians, I've got many Asian friends. So I think you should have, you're, you're, it should be the rebellious leader. <laughs> Not the resilient leader. Resilient. <laughs> the rebellious leader. <laughs> Why not, bro? Rebellion is what gets you what? Freedom. Uh, you understand? Serious. Come on. Uh, but yeah, and. Yeah, I think there's definitely a lesson to be learned with regards to how to teach our kids. It has to come from a, a position of, I want you to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I want you to love it. I want you to mm -hmm. run back to it in the future. Mm -hmm. It should come from a spiritual angle rather than this kind of physical, you must memorize the Quran. Umar radiallahu anhu memorized Surah Baqarah for how many years? It's just like two, and eight, years. Eight. two and a half years. Two and a half years. I think just Baqarah. Just, just Baqarah. Baqarah. Oh, I thought it was eight for some mm -hmm. reason. Two and a half years. I don't know if I understand. The would memorize 10. So they think it's, it's also good in the terms of, am I reading for the sake of reading? Or am I reading, learning to read for the sake of understanding and putting it to practice? Mm. That should be. So let's say you learn very little to read, but through love, they're teaching you good. This is what you need to do, be a, to, do to be a good Muslim. Mm. That would have been a, a better problem. And that's what I'm saying. Look, I think in our communities, there's a lot, a lot of failures. Mm. And it's not always the youngster that is to be blamed. It's people who are, 
Above. sometimes in positions of authority and leadership and elders that also, you know what, kind of need to take responsibility. Mm. Yeah. Cool. So fast forwarding, you told us the first time you got arrested. So yeah. now what's the first time that you've gone kind of prison at what age and things like this? I went to the age, I went prison from the age of obviously um I got and arrested for street robbery. I, I got I got caught and then obviously they put me on bail. As soon as I bail, obviously the parents start um panicking. Like you caught an M charge or something. Mm. We need to get yeah. you out of here. Yeah, of course. It's it's a big thing home. for them. Yeah, big yeah, man, big thing for them. So they've took me back home now. So that was an M charge, yeah? No, 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 yeah, I was 14, still young, man. Still young. Yeah, I was telling 14, 15, 15. I think I got I got arrested for several, like, I think 17 robberies or something. I got bagged for in it. You know, then this time now, I cut out. I've gone to Hagisa now. My mom's panicking and that. I remember I cut out. Um, as soon as I have left, um, I end up um, being in Hagisa for maybe another, I don't know, seven, eight months by myself. Obviously, I was living with my granddad. Actually, no, I was living with my granddad. My mum's my shirk. Big Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Qadir, big Sheikh. He's got the orange beard. Mm -hmm. And when they got the orange beard, they're, they're, they're serious, man. <laughs> it's a serious, man, mashallah. <laughs> so this time now, um, yeah. Allah, so I need to get the orange, yeah? <laughs> yeah. No, 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 you know, or like. It's a diet, bro, you're, like, you're not official, nah, nah. man. I'm saying, no, it's all the Somali. No, no, I know, I know, I'm joking. <laughs> hinna, they put Hinna in there. They put Hinna, that's yes. what it is. Anyway, um, these times, um, I'm with him, so he's got a bigger mansion. I, I never prayed once in his house. Mm. But he was so humble with me, he loved me, you know. So like his, his, his Quran books are from that wall to that wall. So that's the whole thing. And I looked at it and I think, why is this guy's got so much books? Mm. Don't every book mean the same thing, bro? Mm. They all look the same. Yeah. Like, they, all look, they all look the same. Mm. But anyway, then fast forward, then um, my then I was there for a bit, then uh, and, and I learned had his story, my father passed away. So whilst you was there, yeah, you yeah, said? I was like, there, yeah, my mom was there, I was on High Street, I remember. My mum, I got a phone call from my mum and auntie. They were both together. It was my dad's sister and my mum. But they're never ever together. Mm. So I was what's going on here? There's something going on today. Why are you guys together? Ah, oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. My cousin broke the news to me. Father passed away. Elena had his store. Bam. I was, I was, I, I, he didn't stick into me. I was gutted. Kicked in after two days, three days later. Damn, man, he's mm. gone, man. Mm -hmm. And I just saw him before I left as well. Mm -hmm. And he told me, he gave me some advice. He said, make sure you learn something so you don't beg no one for nothing. Make sure knowledge, again, you've got your knowledge. Make sure you stick with your uncle, my brother, his older brother. Make sure you respect him. Make sure you stand by him. Gave me a few knowledge. And from there, that's the last time I see him. Then fast forward, um, I end up coming back to my auntie. My mom's plan was to keep me out there. I had like two months left on my password and it's going to expire. Mm -hmm. So I was just going to be out there just wondering. You know what I mean? And she just knows me just getting arrested, not coming home for two, three weeks. So she's thinking, that's be you're better off there, After, mate. Yeah. Instead of being here, like anything can happen to you here. And plus it's embarrassing to me. Mm. You know, see, it's the shame that they're more concerned about sometimes, mm. not the impact on the child. Yeah. yeah. That's, another, that's another musiba as well. Yeah, that's a big musiba, yeah. isn't it? What people will say. Yeah. Not about helping the person. Yeah. But you know what? People will say this about my, you know, and that again, you know. It's not good, I know. Yeah. I know. So then afterwards, um, what ended up happening, I ended up coming back, end up getting, I end up going to jail, 15. I'm 15 years old, I'm in jail now. For those robberies, yeah, that you done? In yeah. So mm. no, no, a few of them, obviously I went guilty, a few of them got dropped. I went guilty, boom. And then two of them, I got done for two of them. So I got six months to do three. Back then you get light birds, it's youth's court. First time, well, it's not first offence, but obviously second offence, but it's really light. So six months is a lot back then, isn't it, mm -hmm. you know? I ended up going to Huntercombe. As I went to Huntercombe, got six months to free, spent my first night in jail. Do you know what I mean? But I was, at that time, I was already, I forgot to mention, that like, between the ages of 12 and 14, I was in care, mm -hmm. you know? Mm. I was in care. Uh, with, with a family? Yeah, with bare families and children's homes. I've lived with maybe 25 families. Mm. Any any Muslim families? Um, no, not one Muslim. Okay. Not one staff, yeah, not one, no Muslims. No, I don't 
12 to 14, two years. Yeah. But then that's, then at its last six months, my auntie, my dad's sister stepped in. She's a very educated mo woman, mashallah. She said, you know what, this is my brother's son. Cause she she does foster care in herself. Mm. She's like, you know what? Inshallah. I want yeah. She, she's so important. She's got a degree and mm. stuff like that. Allah about it. Do you know what I mean? She came in the 60s and that. So these times she's like, no, I'll just my son, let me look after him. This is my brother's son, let me look after him. Then she, I stayed with her for a bit, but then I had that, you know, that lifestyle where I was coming home late. And I was used to staying up for a couple of nights. Mm. She didn't want me to affect her children like Kids that. Kids as well. So it's like I was getting that, yo, stop doing that. So stop doing that, stop doing that then. To a point where I got told, if you if you come home after 10 o'clock, like, don't even bother, innit? Mm -hmm. And I said, Phew. I got to the time, it was 11 o'clock, I said, bruv, I'm, I'm going back to West, bruv. And then she, I was living in the East at the time, went to, back to West London, and then, yeah, that's what's up. So that was the first time to go in, was when you went in? 15, yeah, I was 15 the first time. Yeah. And didn't prison give you a shock to say you don't want to go back, or was it like I another... Was a it was another care home. Mm. I lived with strangers. I have, I have a fight. The first time I went into a care home with children's home, the first day I walked in, a guy pulled out a knife on me. In the... Uh, in the care yeah, Albanian boy. Mm. I didn't know what I was doing. I put the bags down like I was on the wing. I just put the bags Similar down. Similar to a wing. But yeah, it's, yeah, bro. I was just used That's it. Already mad. adapted. You get pulled. But then I said, what you got in your bag? Do you mm. remember you got your back backed out? He was not even, it was not even a knife. He's got one of them, you know, the carpet razor things. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, standing knife. Yeah, standing like, yeah. yeah. On me. No one's ever pulled out nothing on me like that before. Mm. I was like, ah, oh, it's a bit shocked. For my, three months down the line, I got my I got my own back on him anyway, but mm. yeah. That's a that's crazy. That that's a, meant to be a place where where does the adults so where's this happened on the third floor. I was whiling. So his room was there, and my room was there. I swallowed my pride. Man. So, so, oh, man. But there's no one there to kind of see this happening? No one didn't see it. And obviously, I didn't snitch. And no, no kind of like older this Muslim boys or Somali boys to kind of like assist you in there? There's no Somalians in here. Mm. So and you're on your own, basically? Yeah. So I mean, that's so I got I got Eric. I got Eric. He's a semi-pro boxer. I ended up seeing him at Eric Thomas's. Um, event mm. and was two two years ago. Imagine I was in care with this guy Superman. when I was full, and I ended up seeing him. Mm. And I looked at him and said, "Is that you, Eric?" Mm -hmm. And he was like sixteen at the time. I even had a fight with him in the care. Yeah, in the care. Mm -hmm. I was just rebellious again. Yeah. So yeah, so you went hunter come, and then you came out after three months, basically. Yeah. And then what was the? Did they give you a home when you came out? What was the kind of procedure after that? Now, after that, when I came out of prison, then obviously that big sh impact happened where I lost my father. And then once I lost Arbo, and um, we got to a point where um, I went back to Hoy's house. Mm. Yeah? And I've just come out of prison. So she says, you know what, let me bring him back to um, to the house for a bit, innit? But that didn't last for, that only lasted for six months. Mm. And obviously I came out of prison. I was the first, probably first, first, first person in my area to go to prison. Mm. Do you Even know out of your brothers as well? I think City went, I think City went a bit after me. Stuff a lot. City went before me, you know. The one just older than you? Yeah, City is a year older than me. He went before me. He actually went hunting him as well. Mm. I think he went six months before me. You know, as I was mentioned to you, he was still out here doing his thing yeah, and stuff he, like yeah, that. Said but he still kept his life balanced, you know. He still had, you know, school and stuff like that. So I've come out now, but obviously I'm thinking I'm the man, you know. I'm thinking I'm special. I'm the only kid in my age group that's gone jail. The people that I'm around, and like, I thought I was special, so I got a lot of attention, a lot of questions were asked. So that was like, that was like a badge of honour to go yeah, prison, basically? Yeah, I felt like I was man. I thought I was different. My walk changed. Mm. I started walking different, understand? And then, get me, and after that, um, what ends up happening, I started getting back into that little cycle. Then I ended up going to somewhere else where I just I stopped doing the street uh, robberies and stuff like that. As I mentioned to you, my older brother, he was doing things with other people in mm. the area, you know? So what I used to do was, he used to have like maybe a kilo or something there, but I'll, do, I'll shimmy it, I'll get a knife and just cut it. And then without him realizing, and then from there I'll take it, wrap it up myself, then I'll go to a different block. So you started selling drugs basically yeah. at that age? Yeah, basically, yeah from that, yeah, they got into, yeah, from that age I started selling something. And then from there I made a little bit of change. I had a couple of my friends with me. So we always to break bread. From there I went fast forward then again, you got to the thing to the age of 16, I got introduced gambling. Mm. This is where, that was the worst thing that I learned, you know, 
very, very bad and very addictive because, as I mentioned before, about how something's sweet, it tastes a bit sweet at the beginning, yeah. then it becomes a bit bitter a bit mm. later. Mm. So the gambling thing was sweet because I was just putting a pound in. I was only 16, you're allowed in the bookies when you're 18. Mm. I put a pound in, I'm coming out with £120. Mm. I said, brother, I don't need to do nothing out here no more. This is my hustle. This is the hustle. So I used to do that to a point where I was kept getting money, getting money, money, buying trainees, buying clothes, buying this thinking, yeah, it's easy. But then I went into the bookies one day now. I went in there with maybe two bills. I was meant to get some weed with it, get an ounce of weed or something. But then I said, you know what, let me flip this and maybe get myself a tuna queue and then I'll be okay. The two bills were gone. I said, bro, this is what I'm wiling right now. I didn't, I didn't expect this to happen. Fast forward now, see a China, China, China man there, had two, three bags in his machine, waiting for him to take it out. Corroboration, bam, got it done for robbery again. Just because of that. Mm. Just on that point, the gambling, did you know that was haram, impermissible at that time? Or no? My whole lifestyle was haram. There was mm. no, I was not doing nothing. Khayyad. So you, 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 it wasn't even in your mind, look, what's haram, no. halal, I'm just going to no. do what I need to do. Yes. Okay. You know, mm. I didn't be like, do you know what I mean? I made, don't get me wrong, I knew it was wrong. Because I remember we used to sneak in there and we used to watch out for the aunties that walk, oh, my man's mom's there. Wait until she walks past, then we can walk in. Mm. Then we go. You had an element of respect. Yeah, you had an element for of respect. Pete Dean and Islam and the elders yeah. and Muslim aunties and so on. Yeah. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Never know. And then I end up going to jail. I end up doing that silly um, thing that I did, and then end up going to jail at the age of where am I? Six, six, seventeen. I went to jail seventeen. I met you. That's where I first saw you. Was you seventeen, 17 then? Yeah, bro. Just maybe 18, because you was an adult side by then. No, bro. I, I saw you before that, innit? I was with your... I um, was with... In, in, Two Face well. and that. Yeah, that's when you came in. You had half throw, and that time when you had a little madness inside the football. Remember that time? Mm -hmm. You were 17 then, We don't need to go into the history of that <laughs> one. Right, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> good. I need to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm bringing all these girls and bad guys home. <laughs> but you remember that? You were 17 that, then when that yeah, happened, right? I was 18 at that point. But I turned 18. Because okay, you went to Till, yeah. Yeah, I was an adult side by then. Ah, uh, yeah. You're yeah, right, yeah. you know. I turned, yeah. yeah so you would have just been 18 from yeah, there as well. 18, yeah. Yo, geez, what what April prison was this? 27. This was Felton. April the 27th, 2007. 7. 2007. Yeah, April the 27th. Yeah, he was there with me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, you do, did you tell Joe? Did you kind of like get along? No, no. First time, I was not on the same wing, but mm. I saw him. I remember him. He was in another group called Ahmed. And my couple of next brothers, I used to see him and look at him. I could see the energy. He had a lot of energy. I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. I then I eventually... Bad energy. I heard that, I heard that good energy. You know I me mean? Confident energy. I'm like, yeah, this brother is real, man. And then after that, four, four years down the later, we end up seeing each other again. And that's when we bonded. <laughs> <laughs>